In this video, we're going to talk about negative exponents and fractional exponents. There's only one real rule you have to remember with negative exponents, and that's the following. It says, if you have a number raised to a negative power, well, I can rewrite that. You can rewrite anything as itself by just dividing over 1. The idea is, if you have a negative exponent, you can basically take that term, that factor, and put it in the denominator of your fraction and make it a positive exponent. And that's the rule. So for example, 5 to the negative first, again I can think of 5 to the negative first as being, well, 5 to the negative first divided by 1. I can just move the 5 to the denominator and get 5 to the first or 1 fifth. So 5 to the negative first is really the same thing as 1 fifth. Likewise, um, let's maybe do another example. Suppose I have 5 to the negative second over 5 to the negative fourth, and I want to simplify this number down. Well, I see a negative 2 on top. I can put that in the bottom and make the exponent positive 2. Notice the 4 in the bottom is also negative. I'll move that to the top and make it positive 4. And now I can do my simplification, my subtraction. If I take 4 minus 2, I'll be left with 5 squared. And 5 times 5 is just plain old 25. So 5 to the negative second over 5 to the negative fourth is just a fancy way of writing the number 25. Okay, fractional exponents, there's nothing different about a fractional exponent. You just treat them like regular old exponents. So for example, suppose I have 5 to the 1 -third power, and I'm multiplying that by 5 to the 2 thirds power. Again, if you have like bases, recall we add the exponents. So 1 -third plus 2 thirds, that's 3 thirds but 3 thirds is the same as 1, so I'm left with 5 to the first or just 5. You can combine um, fractional exponents with negative exponents. So suppose I have suppose I have 5 to the 7 thirds over 5 to the negative two-thirds. Well, in this problem, I can think about there being a times one in the bottom. Again, that's not going to change the denominator at all. It's still the same value. Well, the seven-thirds already has a positive exponent, so I'm going to leave it like it is. I can move the negative two-thirds up to the numerator and make it positive two-thirds. Again, my one is on the bottom. Well, anything divided by 1 is itself, so I'm going to get rid of the 1. 7 thirds plus 2 thirds, remember I have like bases, I add the exponents. That's 9 thirds. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And recall that 5 cubed is just 5 times 5, which is 25. And 25 times 5, which is 125. That would be your solution to this problem. So nothing different about fractional exponents. They behave just like regular exponents do. So let's take maybe a couple more examples. Typically in most algebra problems, they'll want you to write things with no negative exponents. So that's why you'll want to make use of this property quite a bit. So let's do some harder examples. Suppose I have m to the fourth raised to the negative third, and that's being divided by m to the negative second power, and all of that raised to the fourth power. Well, I'm going to get rid of the parentheses on top, and again, remember if, if they're in parentheses, you multiply. So I'll get m to the negative twelfth power, four times negative three being negative twelve. On the bottom, I'm going to get m to the negative 8 power. And since the one on top is a negative exponent, 
I can put it in the denominator, making it positive. I can do the same thing with a negative exponent in the denominator. I can move it to the numerator. And now if I use my property, I've got m, I take the top power minus the bottom power. That'll give me m to the negative fourth. But oh no, now I've got another negative exponent. Again, think about that as being divided by one and you can just move that back to the denominator. And honestly, when I see something like this problem, m to the eighth over m to the twelfth, I always look at the bigger number, subtract away the smaller number, so twelve minus eight is four, and whatever value is bigger, that's where the m's in this case will stay. So twelve minus eight is four, the denominator has a bigger power, that means the m's stay in the denominator. Let's do maybe one more of these. Suppose I have x squared raised to the negative one-third power, and then suppose I have, let's make it x, I don't know, to the third raised to the one-third power, and let's make it x, let's see, what number do we want? How about one-third? raised to the negative 4 power. I don't know. Okay, if I simplify down the first part, again I have to multiply the exponents since they're in parentheses. You can think about 2 as being 2 over 1. So I'll get x, so 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 1 times 3 is 3. On the other part, notice if I multiply, if I make my fraction 3 over 1, I'll get 3 over 3, which is the same as the power of 1, so I'm just going to leave that one alone. Actually, let, let's write it as a power of 1. Again, if I multiply in the denominator, 1 third times negative 4, I can think about that as being a fraction. I'll get negative 4 thirds. And now in this case, I'm going to rearrange things again a little bit. Well, there's a couple different ways you could actually do this one. I'm going to leave the negative exponent in the bottom for now. I've got like bases on top, negative two-thirds, and then a one. If I have like bases, I add the exponents. So you can think about one as being three over three. So negative two-thirds plus three over three, that's going to give me x to the positive one-third power in the numerator. And now, if I move the negative exponent up to the numerator, you, again, you could think about it now as being divided by 1, but anything divided by 1 is just itself. So I have x to the 1 third times x to the 4 thirds. I have like bases. I have a common denominator of 3. I can just add across the top and get x to the 5 thirds. And now it's all simplified down. Again, the only time you can move things around real easily is if there's all multiplication in top and all multiplication in the bottom. So if you see a plus or a minus anywhere in the problem, be real careful about you know trying to change the sign on your exponent. Um, an example of this where I've seen people go wrong, suppose it was x to the negative second plus 3 over say x to the third. It would definitely be incorrect in this case, notice the plus in, in here, to say, oh, well, the x, to the, this has a negative exponent, it's x to the negative second, and if I put that in the bottom, along with my x to the third, and then leave that with just a three on top. That is not correct. If this sign had been multiplication at the beginning, you could definitely do that. But if there's pluses or minuses floating around, you have to be real careful about using um, this trick of making the exponents positive by moving it. Um, so just a little word of warning there. Hope these examples make some sense. Definitely feel free to take a look at them again. Um, if not, there's definitely a video out there of basic exponent properties on my website. So you may want to take a look at those if you're a bit rusty. Um, recall that fractional exponents, you can actually turn those into radicals. You can use radical notation. And remember, radicals are like square roots, cube roots, etc. 
So if you've forgotten how to convert from the exponential notation to radical notation, um, definitely feel free to visit my website. There's a video on that, and you can refresh yourself on that stuff as well.